So, today's episode is about the letter Aleph. In the Hebrew pictograph, the picture is of a bull. Before the Tower of Babel, men shared a single language. And we believe that that language was Hebrew. Uh, Hebrew is expressed in 22 letters, which originally uh, were shown as pictures. So one picture for each letter. The letter A, for example, in Hebrew is called Aleph, and it's the picture of a bull. The letter B in Hebrew is Bet, and it's a picture of a house. So if you look at the word alphabet, uh, it's sort of a Greek version of Aleph Bet, um, the original language that all mankind shared. What makes this alphabet special and different from all of the other alphabets is the other alphabets were created as a response to what happened at the tower um, when the languages were confused and different nationalities found themselves um, speaking different languages. So they came up with uh, letters and things to, to represent um, the new sounds that they were making. Um, but originally, when Father created mankind, um, they were already created with the ability to speak and to understand things that he told them. So it's our belief that, um, that he made these letters and that he designated what the symbols would be. Now, if that's true, then they should show some evidence of super intelligence um, because he is who he is. And they definitely do. And that's one reason why we started this series and wanted to share some information with you about Father's Alphabet. You're live. You will learn to read in the original language. You will know the meaning of the letter. When we're done, you will be able to read the enigmatic writings on the stones before the flood. That's Carlos. And he's actually quoting a 7th century BC Assyrian king named Ashurbanipal. Um, Ashurbanipal had a, a pretty significant library back in the day, sort of equivalent to Alexandria at its time. Um, it was also uh, burned by fire. Carlos actually wants to go to Nineveh and check Ashurbanipal's ruin. Yeah, so. He had, uh, he had clay tablets that were burnt and baked, and they found those. But uh, according to uh, the writings from, from Ashurbanipal himself, that uh, he, had, he had stones that were markers from before the flood. And those markers had enigmatic characters on those. And uh, we believe uh, they, they're not looking for those. We believe they're looking for clay baked tablets, but we want to go again and find the monumental stones, stones that supposedly Noah left. That that would be a bigger find than yeah. Dead Sea Scrolls. That's that to me. That's bigger than Dead Dead Sea Scrolls. So uh, yeah, good. we we like to get down there. The way Father's alphabet system works is he uses the pictures of the letters to show you the meaning of a word. Take the word Father for example. In Hebrew, the word for father is av, aleph, bet. The aleph is a picture of a bull, um, which is a picture of strength, a picture of leadership, um, of someone or something that is chief and that is powerful. Um, the bet is a picture of a house. So what you have in the word father is the leader of the house, the strength of the house. Another example is in the Hebrew word for God, which is El, and spelled Aleph Lamed. Um, somewhere I believe it's in one of the writings of Peter, they refer to our Lord as the chief shepherd. So think about that for a sec. While you look at this picture, chief shepherd is beautifully represented in the word El. The Hebrew language is based on a root system of words. So there are several roots uh, consisting of two or three letters that 
serve as the basis for the entire language. And letters are added to those roots to form different words. Um, so one example of that would be the word for gift. In Hebrew, gift is hav. Um, if you were to add an aleph to the root word gift, you end up with a hav, which by the letters is a picture of the strongest gift or the, the most powerful gift. And the word ahav in Hebrew is love. So if you think about it, um, he says that greater love has no one than this to lay down his life for his friends. Because if somebody dies for you, they have nothing left to give. That is the absolute greatest gift and the biggest demonstration of love that they could possibly show. You were telling me a story about the bull and the origin of the bull. Not the origin of the bull. Um, the How they turned the bull into something else. The urban legend, the of, urban the bull? legend of the bull. Oh, here's how it goes. It's uh, it's uh, when uh, Enoch wrote of uh, the Adamic line from Adam, of uh, which the the anointed one would come and redeem mankind. Uh, every one of his descendants was a bull. And we hear that uh, angels came down, and they wanted to make themselves bulls. So they were there before and after the flood. So apparently they came again. Now, uh, when Noah was uh, was in charge, he let him know, uh, uh, from, from me will come the bulls. And somebody named Nimrod took it upon, uh, that was his great-grandson, took it upon himself to uh, name himself a bull and proclaim himself a bull. So when that happened, uh, he was the template for all other uh, kingdoms from there on. You've got a lot of kings and leaders and warlords throughout history that and they are all, wearing the horns. They're all wearing the horns. Now, uh, when uh, Noah landed, he, he stopped at uh, Haran, and he taught him well. And uh, Haran got taken over by the Hittites, and the Hittites eventually uh, conquered the Greeks, a section they call Luvians now. So when they conquered the Greeks, they brought in they brought in uh, they brought in some Greeks, and they also had their bulls, but they called them Taurus because uh, they were from the Taurus Mountains. So, needless to say, as time went on, uh, Joseph was sent down to Egypt. Pharaoh. Uh, gathered grain through uh, through the providence of uh, Yohe Bohe, and over the course of seven years saved up grain, and over the course of the next seven years became owner of everything in the world. Everything. So uh, there was nothing left to buy. He even bought the Hebrews' land. <laughs> so he owned everything in the world. In those days, uh, Joseph, I'm sure, had the power to go up and visit his uh, cousins in uh, Haram. Uh, he could take the whole Pharaoh army and uh, visit his uh, people. And it was customary to go to their people in Haram to get wives. So I am sure when they visited Haram, they brought back some wives and they brought back the Taurus from Haram because they was not uh, worshipped in uh, in the Canaanites. Only in Haram and in Taurus, the, the Javanites, the, the children of uh, Javan. So they came back to Egypt. They uh, started worshiping bulls. No doubt, Father was mad. They got into slavery for it, punished, right, for being adulterous. When Moses came to deliver them, even with ten miracles, they still worshiped Taurus. The golden calf. The golden calf. So... There, there were no golden calves in Egypt. No, e Egypt had Pepe, the <laughs> frog, <laughs> Pepe, Osiris, yeah. a few others, but no bulls. So they brought, uh, they brought a strange god with them when they brought wives, and uh, they must have been worshiping that god, and Father got mad at them, because if they were doing right, would Father have let them get enslaved? Probably not. And uh, 
note to the bull worship worshipers, none of those bull worshipers made it through the wilderness to let you know. This is Dawson signing out. Until next time, while we still have the time. Um, next week we will be going over the letter bait. And once we have a few letters under our belt, we can start reading some Hebrew verses together. Um, one cool thing to look forward to about bait is when it speaks of Father's temple, the word is actually his house. See you guys. And there we are. There we are. One strong leads to where we are. a beautiful desire to learn your ways and seek your heart and when the days are full of fire to know that Leads to where we are. Ah.